the vast majority of Americans, no matter their background, have always agreed on a few core ideas. The absolute necessity of protecting free speech, the rule of law as opposed to the unchecked authority of those in power, and the freedom to practice one's faith, not just to gather for worship, but to peaceably live and work according to your faith in all aspects of your life. Today, though, this key consensus is in the crosshairs of an intolerant worldview, a worldview that makes the God-given rights of millions of Americans dependent on the views of a very powerful few. And unfortunately, President Joe Biden is appointing people to his administration who embody this worldview, who seem to disdain America's fundamental freedoms. Let's take a look at some of President Biden's picks, starting with Richard Stengel, his choice to lead the U.S. Agency for Global Media. In 2019, Stengel wrote an op-ed at the Washington Post where he openly called for an abandonment of the First Amendment's protection of free speech. Disparaging the First Amendment's unqualified protection of free speech as a design flaw, Stengel indicated his agreement with foreign leaders who asked him why an American citizen should be free to burn a Quran in the name of free speech. To be sure, burning a Quran strikes many Americans as offensive, but so does burning an American flag, an act the U.S. Supreme Court has twice ruled is protected speech under the First Amendment. In its 1990 decision, United States versus Eichmann, the court explained that punishing desecration of the flag dilutes the very freedom that makes this emblem so revered. Makes sense, right? But rather than pointing to America's rich tradition of protecting even offensive forms of speech, Stengel advocates instead for what he calls guardrails on free speech. All speech is not equal, Stengel wrote. And where truth cannot drive out lies, we must add new guardrails. It should be chilling to all Americans that people with views like Stengel's will be deciding what speech lies outside the guardrails in a Biden administration. As the Supreme Court wrote in its 2018 decision, National Institute of Family and Life Advocates, or NIFLA, versus Becerra, the people lose when the government is the one deciding which ideas should prevail. Speaking of NIFLA versus Becerra, President Biden's pick as head of the Department of Health and Human Services, Xavier Becerra, was on the losing end of that case, where he was opposed by Alliance Defending Freedom attorneys, including ADF President Michael Ferris. Free speech was on the docket in NIFLA, where the Supreme Court struck down a California law, aggressively defended by Becerra as the state's attorney general, that would have forced pro-life pregnancy centers to advertise for taxpayer-funded abortions in direct conflict with their very purpose. In his concurring opinion, Justice Anthony Kennedy rightly denounced the attempt to coerce speech that Becerra had defended all the way to the nation's high court. Governments must not be allowed to force persons to express a message contrary to their deepest convictions. Censorship is bad enough, but California's attempt at compelled speech was downright chilling. If Becerra used his time as California AG to try to force pro-life pregnancy centers to promote abortion, imagine what he can do as head of all national health care policy for the country. Becerra's predecessor at the California Attorney General's office will also be a familiar name. Kamala Harris, now Vice President of the United States. When Vice President Harris was Attorney General in California, an undercover investigation by citizen journalist David Daleiden exposed a campaign donor of hers, Planned Parenthood, for its role in illegally trafficking baby body parts. Daleiden used textbook undercover techniques to investigate and expose Planned Parenthood's actions. Daleiden's approach is in line with long-standing journalistic practices that date back to at least the early 1900s when Upton Sinclair exposed the meat industry in his famous novel, The Jungle. In fact, while Daleiden was shedding much-needed light on Planned Parenthood's revolting activities, an animal rights group in California was using similar techniques to document abuse of chickens in the poultry industry. In the animal rights case, then-Attorney General Harris applauded the investigators and took action based upon the investigation. In the Planned Parenthood case, she threw the book at Daleiden, ordering a raid on his home and charging him with criminal trespass, fraud, and racketeering. Government targeting and punishing of people for their views has no place in a free society. Yet Biden's administration seems eager to engage in just that kind of behavior. 
If we want to continue to enjoy our God-given freedoms, we have to watch out for threats against them. That means speaking out and standing up for the values that have always held Americans together. That's the only way we'll be able to hand down our priceless heritage of free speech, the rule of law, and religious freedom to our children and grandchildren. Join Alliance Defending Freedom as we do just that at www.adflegal.org slash standforfreedom.